Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Let's talk money. Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. I'm Glenn Craig of Free From Broke, and I'm your moderator tonight. Here are the minds that make up the Money Mastermind Show. We have Miranda Marquette of Planting Money Seeds, Peter Anderson of Bible Money Matters, Kyle Prevo of YoungandThrifty.ca, and Tom Drake of Canadian Finance Blog. Today we have a special show. We're going to discuss how networking can help your career. And part of how we're going to do that is we're going to kick it out to our friends at FinCon, the financial blogger conference, to find their best networking tips. So based on that sentence, you can see what our, our topic for today is, how networking can help your career. You hear a lot of people talk about how networking really is the key to advancing your career. Um, how is that the case? How can we better network? Where do we start? Not everybody is a natural networker. So let's start with why network at all? What really are the benefits? Are there benefits to networking? Um, who'd like to jump into that one first? Well, for me, <laughs> uh, networking has been uh, key for uh, finding peer learning, being able to learn from my peers in, in my industry. Uh, I work at an advertising agency for my day job, so I've uh, been to quite a few of these these uh, advertising conferences, basically, and uh, you can really learn a lot from your peers that are working in your industry. You can learn about uh, you know different things that are c coming up in your industry, things that you should be learning about. They can uh, point you towards education programs, and they can be good contacts to have um, as far as uh, maybe if you get laid off or or you're looking for a new job at some point. So. And here I thought you had guys just sat around, sat around watching Mad Men all day, Peter. <laughs> that too. So uh, I think that's a really great point in that networking, um, if you, something does happen in your job, your network that you're building, the people that you're meeting, these are the people that you can go to first and say, hey, you know what, something happened at my job. Do you have anything over there? What advice can you give me? And that's an important aspect. You know, you don't not always schmoozing people or building up within even your own company, but um, just having people that you can fall back on should something happen is a pretty valuable thing. Yeah, Peter uh, brought up conferences. Um, I've gone to some conferences and training for for software that I use in, in my, my corporate job where it's very specific stuff that only certain companies use. And just the, the networking and being in a class where you're talking to everybody that's working in a different company. If, if I ever wanted to switch jobs, I, I basically have at least one contact in all these different companies. So it's it's handy to build around something like really niche like that where you can kind of reach out to them where before I wouldn't have had any contacts at any of these companies. Yeah, you and, bring up a good point, Tom. It doesn't have to be like a formal setting uh, where you're you're a work conference. Any group of people you interact with uh, can become a network. I even I hate the idea of network because it sounds too like business cliche. -y, but all these groups of people are good contacts for you to just keep in mind and uh, and see how you can help each other out. And I think also. Uh, a lot of companies, you might think an industry is big and gigantic, but the truth of the matter is a lot of people, they jump from job to job. So the person who's sitting next to you in the cubicle, when they leave to another job, they might be the person that you meet the next time you run, you know, jump to a job. You know, I, I, I worked in advertising for a little while also, and um, after a little bit of time, you knew people at a whole bunch of different companies because they either worked with you or they knew somebody that knew somebody else. So it's easy uh, to build up a web of people pretty quickly. I was going to say, even even if you're not working for you know the man, it also helps to network if you're self-employed. In my case, networking helps me find more gigs and often higher paying gigs. So. I think it's important to remember that networking, and it can also help you find partnerships. I mean, um, my wonderful business partner I found through networking. So, so I mean, it's just it's not just about you know helping you get a leg up when you're trying to move to a new company. It's also about you know 
profitable relationships and moving forward and and uh, even helping you out when you're self-employed. You need to keep net keep that networking going so that you can find those other opportunities. It's, it's really about opening the door to more opportunities down the road, whether that's with a company or whether you go out on your own. And it should be noted that this show doesn't exist in this form if, if we all didn't go out and network and, and try to meet other people online in our respective businesses here. You know, that's... None of us live near each other or or know each other from a cubicle next door. You know, we've all uh, reached out and we know each other online in different aspects. And like you said, that opens up different doors. And that's how this show itself has come into being. So we, we mentioned a couple of different things, uh, like with conferences and whatnot. So how does a person go about building their network? You know, I mean, I'm not a person who, who who's a go out goes out and schmoozes a lot. It's not a good thing for me. It's mm -hmm. it's it just feels excruciating. But how do we do it? How do, how can we start that? Well, I'm not sure I could write the book on how to do it, but I know how not to do it because that's how all the uh, business undergraduates at my university did it. And that is come up to you with a business card, uh, shake your hand, press that business card into your hand as quickly as possible, try and exchange one or two superficial facts uh, and basically try to mine you for what you can do for them. That's exactly how not to network. Don't do that. Uh, pretty much anything good that's ever happened to me because of networking has been because I just legitimately tried to become friends with the person, tried to see if we could help each other out in some way or if there was sort of a natural connection and then as a byproduct of that, something down the road happened. It, it wasn't a let's see how many business cards I can hand out and we'll strike gold tonight at some mixer, a uh, pretentious mixer thing. Uh, it, it has never been like that for me. <laughs> and Kyle, it's you... interesting uh, that you pointed out business cards. Um, an idea of how useless they are, I've got the stack sitting on my desk right here that I have never really looked at because they were forced into my hand and they sit there but I don't even know who's on them. Like it's, it's not the same as actually making a real connection with someone. Right. Well, and that's the thing is, I I have my business cards that I get to events or, or whatever, but then when we go to the social part of it, I, I often forget them. I leave them back in the room. I don't want to carry them around. So then so then I'm there and people are like, oh, do you have a business card? I'm like, well, I do, but it's back in my, you know, it's back in my hotel room. I should just keep them in my pocket. But when we're doing these social things, I, you know, like you were saying, I don't want to hand out business cards left and right. <laughs> So, so I don't, but I found that it doesn't matter. I think if, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have my business card. I get home, and half the time, the very person who asked me for the business card has already sent me an email. And so, you know, if, if it's important enough to them that they come up to you and they're like, can I have a business card, you know, then it's important enough to them that they'll go home and they'll Google you, I guess. I don't know. I assume that's how they find me, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> Now uh, I sound like a pretentious, it, awful person, but <laughs> I feel like in today's world of online resumes and basically everyone having an online footprint, whether they know it or not, the whole idea of a business card is more for like playing business than it is for actually networking. Sometimes it's like, oh, I'm gonna start a company now. The first thing I'm gonna do is get myself a business card because that means I'm legit. Uh, I have no business plan, but look at my business card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think a business card can be helpful in certain situations you know you can use it you can get people's cards and you can write notes on the cards about what you talk about with them you know who they are what they you know have what their company they work with and it's already on there but anyway but I think the, the key is uh, being genuine with people when you're talking with them it's not so much a business card as, as creating a relationship with someone being genuine smiling be being interested in what they are talking about not just uh, talking about yourself um, so creating a relationship with someone so that down the road you can help them or they can help you or uh, you can just have a new friend. So The, the business card, it could be a, a talking piece. It has your information on it. It's a great way to, to reiterate somebody's name. I'm horrible with names. And when if you're at a, a social event and there's music going on and all sorts of things happening, everybody's talking, you know, sometimes it's just being able to see who they are even though you're friendly, it is kind of a nice thing. Um, but I think 
like Kyle and Peter, you make great points. Real networking, um, I've been reading Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi, and it has a lot of really great tips. And one of the main things he talks about is it's not about taking, right? So it's not about uh, what can I get from you. It's a little bit more about what can I give to you. So sometimes it's just being real and just talking to people, and then you just build some some real friendships um, and relationships. And then if something comes along and you say, hey, you know, do you know such and such, or how can I help you with this, then that network is able to, to flourish. So that's kind of important, too, that it doesn't have to be something of a game, but just making connections with other people, like real connections. It's not just about making a collection of business cards. Well, and if you make that real connection, at least in my case, I don't feel guilty about asking for a favor down the line. I know I've asked all of you for favors at certain points. I'm constantly bugging Miranda. Can you look at this? Can Because Miranda does a lot of the same uh, sort of writing as I do. Uh, I don't feel guilty doing that if I've already made a genuine friendship. If we exchange business cards just for the sake of taking advantage of one another, then I would feel incredibly guilty and awkward the entire time. Yeah. So besides, we mentioned conferences and, and basically just talking to people, but still, how do we go about, how does a person go about building that network? You know, even if you're at a conference, what do you do? <clears throat> or when you're just generally at work, how do you go about building that network? <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, I think one thing that we don't often think about, but that I think works pretty well, at least for me, is uh, networking with people on social media. It doesn't necessarily have to be in person. I've made a lot of uh, great connections and, and made some new friends just through Twitter or other social media. Often it leads to you know a real life relationship as well as far as becoming friends with them or meeting them at a conference or, or that type of thing. But often that can be that that first uh, foot in the door to getting to know somebody is, is just interacting with them a little bit on social media and, and helping them out with some things that they've got going online as well. I think that's also sometimes industry specific, right? I mean, is that something that you would do yeah. at your day job or is that more for what you do uh, with your online work? Yeah, I might do that for uh, you know my day job as well. I've got a whole Twitter list full okay. of uh, advertising agencies and advertising companies and so forth. So. I do actually use that in my day job as well. So, yeah, there's always industry-specific forums and such. Like that, it, it doesn't have to be an online job to to be able to use the internet to kind of benefit. And, and when should people start networking? Like, I think um, you know, you think about a job and you think about networking, but I think networking starts way before then, right? If you're going to school, you should really be looking there to start building those friendships and networks as well. You have a whole slew of people who can be part of that that net out there oh, that yeah. you can access. Yeah, definitely. When I was in journalism school, I, I got to know quite a few people and even though I was one of the few that went in, you know, kind of the online route to stay home, and a lot of them went and went off and to become, you know, associate editors at publications and and whatnot. And after a year, um, that's how I got, you know, that gig working, you know, writing for Discover Magazine. I wrote a few little pieces for Discover Magazine, and I got that because one of my school, uh, I don't know, fellows, fellow students, <laughs> um, he was, he was you know, an assistant editor. He was in charge of, you know, the front of the book. And so he he just contacted me. He's like, we need somebody to provide some some content. So can you can you take care of this? Can you write these articles? And so it was, you know, the that connection and building that relationship really helped. And you know, I'm people from, you know, my field, I mean they're working at ESPN, they're working at, you know, popular science popular mechanics. I mean, so I mean there's just lots of Places where, you know, the people that you meet in school, when they all disperse, can actually help you along the way. And I want to say another concept also is keeping your, your network uh, warm, your contacts warm. And it's something I'm horrible at, but just following up with different friends that you might have. And just, you know, even just an email once in a while, hey, how's it going? Or you just remember somebody's birthday. Or, or whatever it is, it, it kind of keeps um, that relationship going. So you don't want to have that one person who you know is maybe in a power position, 
but you haven't spoken to him in two years, but now you're going to call him up when you need a job, right? So that, <laughs> you know, that's not really going to work so well. But if it's somebody that you're like, oh, hey, man, I haven't heard from you in a while, just want to know what's going on, maybe we can meet for coffee for 10 minutes or something along those lines. So to keep, keep those connections warm. Uh, again, it's not something I do well, but you, know, you, you do what you can and you, you, you try. Well, I was just going to say, that's my problem. Is like All the things I should be doing, I'm like, yeah, this is what you should be doing. Maybe I should do that too. <laughs> Right. right. Well, you know, networking, that's one of those things that can be tough for, for a lot of people to do. If you're if you're an introvert like I am, naturally, you, you go into these situations with a lot of different people, you know, maybe at a, a conference or a, or a big event. It's a ton of people, and I do well in, in smaller situations where there's a, there's a few people there, and I can go up and talk to a few people, and, you know, it's not a lot of pressure and, and so forth. But you get into these bigger situations where there's, you know, 100, 200 people there, and you feel like you have to talk to a bunch of them, but maybe you don't really want to because you're an introvert. Sometimes you almost have to uh, get out of your comfort zone and uh, play games with yourself in order to make sure that you're, you're actually networking and meeting people. I read one article today that talked about uh, one lady would give herself a goal of, of a number of people to talk to because she was an extreme introvert and she knew she had to do this networking and, and build those relationships, but she just really didn't want to do it. So she'd say, okay, I'm... At this event, I'm going to meet 10 people. I want to meet uh, five guys that are wearing blue shirts or something and, and three or five women that are work, carrying big purses or something. She so just make a game out of it and meet people that might be able to help her. But, uh, again, another, another thing that introverted people might do is show up early for some of these bigger events when there's not going to be as many people at the event yet and uh, might be more of a comfortable situation where you can meet one or two people and, and uh, start building some relationships there before things get noisy and a lot of bustle, hustle and bustle and and uh, a little more uh, overwhelming, I guess. So. And, and you know what's funny? As a, as a guy who I think I can be extroverted a majority of the time at least, I find it really, really rewarding to specifically seek out people who are sort of obviously introverts who maybe don't have the easiest time uh, attracting to large groups because they're often just like bursting at the seams with ideas and energy that they haven't been able to share and uh, that's been some of the most sort of fruitful um, you know friendships and relationships that I've ever had have started that way yeah great tips that I was I was gonna go into myself I mean I, I know I feel in a big conference where there's you know hundreds maybe thousands of people that's when I feel the most alone and it's the hardest to talk to people you know, but if you put me in a small area like what Peter said, and it's just a few people, then it's a lot easier to to open up and actually talk to people. Um, yeah, and like what you said, I was going to suggest you you find that one other person who maybe looks even more uncomfortable than you. And uh, you know, that's usually me. <laughs> Team up. <laughs> yeah, how many introverts do we have on this show here? <laughs> uh, I would raise my hand, but I don't want to be uh, the person who's out there that everybody can see. Yeah. <laughs> so they say there's like this continuum, you know, you, like you know, you have your extroversion on one end and in introversion on the other end, and so I tend more toward the introversion side, introversion side, and you know, Kyle's kind of, I guess he says he's he can be extroverted. I think really the only true extrovert is what Tom, right? I I like big <laughs> conferences, but it's. Um, it's still, though, more about quality than quantity. Like, it, even if there's 500 people there, I, I don't need to go and meet 500 people. I, I'd rather meet 10 to 20 people that, that are actually going to, like, form an actual bond with. Like, if, if you're trying to meet everybody and you get overwhelmed by the numbers, then you do end up just, like, handing out business cards and not, not really meeting them. You, you said hi, you handed your card, but that's <laughs> it's kind of a waste of time, so... I wouldn't let the conference size necessarily get in the way of, of what you're trying to do. I think that's a good point, though, that you made. You know, what are you trying to do? Um, are you trying to actually, like, build relationships with people, or are you just trying to throw business card? you know, see how many business cards you can hand out? So I think, you know, establishing, you know, that, that goal, what are you trying to do, I think that's very important. Yeah, it's got to be a natural thing, like like truly networking. It's not... Uh, like Glenn said too, it's not about what you can get for yourself, kind of thing. Like it, it you just got to go there and meet people, and 
sort of see where where it ends up. Like maybe you help out one person, maybe someone else helps out you, and it all kind of just flows well in the end. So now we're going to do something interesting here, and we're going to kick it out to our friends at FinCon. And we have the question out there that we want some people to answer for us, and that is, what is your number one networking tip? So if you're out there, let us know. What is your number one networking tip? Uh, I'm JD Roth, and I write at jdroth.com, but I call it more than money. It's a little confusing. It's okay. Uh, my best networking tip: talk about other people. Uh, talk about their interests. When you meet somebody, uh, talk to them. See if you can find some sort of common ground. You'd be surprised at how easy it is to find some sort of connection with almost anyone. So uh, talk to people, find out what they do, what they like, and find that connection, and just talk about that. And it's a great way to uh, make a connection when you're networking. I agree, absolutely. Um, I'm Kylie Ophiu from kylieofiu.com. I write about personal finance and things like that too. And I found the same sort of thing. Just talk to people everywhere you are and approach them, ask them about anything or give them a compliment on something that they're wearing and it'll open up the conversation straight away. But with that, make sure that you've always got your business cards with you so that you can, <laughs> you can connect and connect again later. So that's my I don't have my business cards with me. I never do. Well, he's Jetty Roth. He doesn't really need them. Hey, this is Matt Giovanisi from ListenMoneyMatters.com, and my networking tip is all about having anecdotes and telling stories to other people, because people like hearing stories, and it's easy to connect with people when you have something interesting to say. My name's Adam Hagerman from AdamHagerman.com, and my number one networking tip is to always go talk to somebody before you talk yourself out. My name is Andrea, and my site is Smart Money Chicks, and my number one networking tip is if you see someone standing alone, go grab them and make sure you introduce them to someone. That way they will love you forever, and they will not feel like all by themselves, and they'll always come back and feel like they kind of owe you one. So don't let anyone stand alone. Just bring them into the conversation. My name is Ryan Gana. I run the website Cash Money Life and the Military Wallet. My number one networking tip is to always buy the first round. Good morning, I'm Doug Nordman. I blog at themilitaryguide.com and my number one networking tip is to always say yes because you never know where the next network tip is going to lead. Hi, I'm Kate Horrell. I blog at katehorrell.com and my number one networking tip is to walk up to people and stick out your hand and say, hi, my name is Kate. Hi, this is Larry Ludwig from Investor Junkie and my tip is to remember a person's name by using a mnemonic. I'm actually very bad with that, but uh, hopefully it will help you. Hi, I'm Leslie Van Z with Mosaic Financial Partners. Our website is www.mosaicfp.com. And my networking tip is learn to be a giver before you are a receiver when, you learn, when you're first meeting somebody. So when you talk to somebody for the first time, what you want to do is find out something that they need help with or they're interested in so that when you follow up with them later, you can provide something to them that they're going to find valuable. It doesn't have to be work-related. It could be something as simple as if you learn that they like biking, you could share a couple of really cool bike paths that you know in your area. And then they'll end up feeling a nice sense of obligation to them and want to share and help with you, help you back in return. Hi, my name is Rob Bennett at passionsaving.com. My number one networking tip is, first of all, I try to say something personal to the person. Get away from all the issues of investing and uh, personal finance and all that. And I sometimes try to be slightly provocative, not to upset the person, but to say, you can open up to me and we can sort of form a bond. And uh, that usually works. Very rarely do people get bothered by that. So you ask them something about their children, where they're headed, or you know, their vacation spot, or whatever it happens to be. Hi, I'm Sandy Smith from Yes, I Am Cheap, and my number one networking tip is to be your authentic self. People will remember who you are when you're exactly who you are on a regular day. If you pretend to be somebody else or pretend to be somebody you're not when you're meeting and networking people, it really won't come off as genuine and authentic, and they won't remember you. Todd Trusted here from AngelMentor.com, and my number one networking tip is to just be real. Don't worry about networking. People are here, they want to connect with other people, so just be yourself and connect with people. It's not really about networking, it's about people. All right, so those are really some great tips. And what I'd like to do now is a, a final word on networking just from our, from our panel here. Uh, so we'll go around and we'll talk about what your number one networking tip is. 
so Miranda, what's your number one networking tip? Um, well, as an introvert, my number one networking tip is to uh, remember that it's work and that you need to recover. I usually, when I go to a conference or a big networking event, I actually take time to go hide for a little bit to kind of recharge my batteries because after a while I either, be, it becomes obvious I'm trying way too hard and so, because <laughs> I, I am. So I do like to go and uh, take a break for two or, I'll go and find two or three hours where I can just go back to my room and recharge and I think that's really important for an introvert is to go back and recharge and regroup so that you can get back out there and, and do what needs to be done. And Tom, what is your number one networking tip? Uh, I think my number one tip is probably to use LinkedIn. Um, it's it's the new Rolodex. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the new Rolodex. Like if uh, if I'm interested in, in maybe looking at a new job, first thing I do go into LinkedIn, see who I know that works at that company, uh, or if who I'm knows someone who knows someone, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, some third level connection if I have to. Yeah, uh, and then. Uh, if I'm going somewhere, the first thing I do is open up LinkedIn and try to arrange a meetup to uh, to meet with anyone that's in that town. So it's and it's not so much about the social media aspect of LinkedIn. I really use it for those connections. Like like I've got almost a thousand there now, and the the filters you can run on that whenever you need something is is very helpful. And Kyle, what's your number one networking tip? My number one networking tip is just to uh, purposely be diverse in who you talk to and converse with. Um, a, a wide array of, of people that you know is good for your own mental health. It's good for keeping things in perspective. And it also selfishly will benefit you because uh, if you sort of have a large pool of people uh, all from one area or from one uh, sort of niche in your life versus a wide array of people, that's going to benefit you in ways you don't even know. And Peter, your f number one networking tip. Okay, my number one tip is to just remember it, it's about building relationships when you're networking. Um, remember, it's not about just what you can get out of these people that you're networking with. It's also it's a two-way street. You need to remember uh, to think about how you can help these people as well because uh, if you don't, uh, it's really not going to work out that well. <laughs> And I want to throw something out there that I don't think has really been talked about, but um, one kind of way to network is do good work. You know, if you're at a job and you're the guy who gets things done, if you can be the guy that knows this report or knows how to get something done, people start to know who you are. And other people start to go, you know what, this is the guy I need to go to to balance an idea off of, or this is the guy I need to go to to find something out. And, and that's how you start to build relationships there. That's where you find you know, your boss knows that you're the go-to guy and then he sends you to somebody else because he's like, hey, if you know this guy can do it, he could help you out. So, I mean, that's an important thing. If you can do good work, people will find you and you'll find other people as well. So go with that. And um, an interesting book on just introversion in general is Quiet, the Power of Introverts in a World that Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. And it's not just a good read for those of us who are introverts, but also for those that are extroverts, too, to just understand uh, the other side of things. Because um, it's not always just being out there and just maybe stereotypical, like loud, running around, meeting everybody. Um, not everybody can do that. And I don't think that's really the reality of what's happening out there anyway. So for everyone out there, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Money Mastermind Show. Please follow us at moneymastermindshow.com. You can find our show notes there. Please, please, please feel free to leave a comment or ask questions. Look for us on iTunes. Subscribe to our podcast. We're also on Stitcher. And until next week, be good with your money. Good night. Thanks for joining us on the Money Mastermind Show. Get more information at moneymastermindshow.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube and follow us on Google+.